welcome. Today we are building a junkyard. This was originally built on Prowler's Patch in Moonwood Mill and it's on a 30 by 30 lot. It's going to have two bedrooms and one bathroom. This is kind of a house on the smaller side because I mainly just wanted to focus on the theming on this one and turn it into a nice uh, non-functional junkyard because you know you can't really do anything with a junkyard in the sims but for storytelling i think it turned out really cute now the house itself it's not really run down but it is i, I wanted it to look old and my thought on the the story for who lives at this junkyard is I thought that when Moonwood Mill first began to take off and they started the logging company there a few people moved in and bought, bought plots of land and I'm thinking that this young couple moved in and bought this land had this house built and decided they wanted to start a auto repair business beside it and over the years, the auto repair business just kind of morphed into a junkyard, per se. It just started collecting more and more stuff. So now it's more of like a, a, an auto repair, uh, pull apart. You can like come pull stuff off of the cars there. There's also some actual like junk, you know, if, if there's pieces of things that you needed to buy, they're going to be here in this junkyard. So this, this nice young couple started this, this business here on their property, and they had a couple kids, and they had two sons, and as the sons grew up, they were raised to, you know, help work in the business, to, to help with the junkyard, and I, I feel like this was a whole family affair, you know, mom and dad and the kids, they all worked here in the junkyard at the business and so this is what they knew this is the only thing they knew and they grew up doing this and I feel like at this point in the story mom and dad have passed and we have the two brothers left and I feel like the two brothers at this point in their sims life are elders never been in a relationship never been married you know their entire life has been running this junkyard I also feel like this is this is a somewhat rural community whereas if you're familiar with that type of setting it's going to be the kind of place where you show up and you expect to spend a few hours if not the day there because you're going to go in knowing what you need but if you encounter these brothers they're just going to want to chat okay they're going to want to sit and talk about everything and how's your grandma doing and did you hear what happened down the road and that's just what they do so with this house I wanted it to look like it's been here for quite a while in this forest setting and it's not in a state of disrepair so much as I feel like the brothers very much at this point in their life adhere to that old adage if it ain't broke don't fix it so as long as everything is still functioning and in decent shape they're not gonna they're gonna do the minimal upkeep they really pour all of their time and energy into being over in the garage in the junkyard which when we get to that there is a, a, a little a garage area over in the junkyard which has a little office and everything and for people to come in and, and do their their junkyard business so I feel like over time this this house has had a few renovations a few additions before the parents passed but I also feel like since the parents passed nothing has really changed that much so like if if the furniture is still usable from when the parents were alive, it's still in there. You know, the kitchen appliances are old. They still work. 
So the brothers feel like there's no reason to change the appliances. The uh, primary bedroom, which one of the brothers has moved into, still has the, the wallpaper on the walls from when the parents lived there. So it's it it's little details like that, and I've got it, it, the kitchen. We're gonna have some some cracks in the tile here and there, on the walls and on the floor, and maybe some cobwebs around the house in hard to reach places. Now the brothers aren't dirty; they clean, and everything is just kind of worn, just kind of old. Uh, the kitchen. Have I rearranged it yet? I think I already did rearrange the kitchen. No. Yes, I did rearrange the kitchen. This is this is the, the final form of the kitchen. I moved the, those cabinets over onto the right that were where the refrigerator is. I just kind of swapped that. I felt like it flowed a little better doing it that way. And I also feel like in this build, any of the decorations that are here are also left over from when the parents were still alive. I don't feel like, with the exception of one picture in the office, and I'll point that out when we get to it, I don't feel like the brothers would have redecorated anything. Once again, they they just, they don't have time. There's There's no time for things like that. They're focused on the business and very much like I said before it if it's a necessity they'll fix it or they'll change it but if it's not hurting anything you know they just they just leave it be I cluttered the kitchen a little bit but not too much because once again I wanted to keep that sense of it's not dirty they clean okay the house is just a little a little old but it's clean and I don't keep all of this clutter over here by the microwave. I do move some of it over onto the left, closer to the stove. But you'll see that here in a few minutes. I also felt like, for storytelling purposes, we've got a bar of soap in the kitchen instead of the, the, the pump soap. We've got towels just laying there on the counter because you know they wouldn't necessarily have a towel rack hanging up and of course we do have uh, one counter left open for actual functionality in this kitchen so that you can cook but I really enjoyed this one because it, it wasn't the typical broken dirty, abandoned, run-down build. It was just a normal old house out in a very rural setting. But I did decide to add, you know, some tears and, and, and cracks in the, throughout the entire room and such. In, in places that would make sense. Places where, like, you know, furniture has scraped the wall. You know, places that would normally have some wear and tear marks. But those cracks in the kitchen, they're just, I don't know, maybe the foundation settled on that side of the house, and that's why we got cracks going on in the kitchen, but not in the, the rest of, of the house. I'm not really sure. But once again, the only thing that I didn't like about this house was how dark it turned out. I did a build that had a 1970s theme, which I actually lost all of the footage recording of me building that a house so I guess maybe what I'll do is like a virtual tour it is up on the gallery if you'd like to download it it's a split level it's got weird multiple levels going on inside the house with platforms it's got a conversation pit in the living room and it is completely themed as if it is in the 1970s but the thing about 
decorating in the 1970s, there's lots of avocado green, there's lots of orange, yellow, and brown. And I don't know, I guess with me growing up in the 80s and 90s, the houses had a lot of that left over, that decoration left over from the 70s. So it felt like my entire childhood was just brown and yellow and orange. And I absolutely hate those colors together now. I hate dark interior design. I hate dark wood and I really dislike brown. So this house, much like the 70s house that I decorated, was a struggle because I do not like the aesthetics of what this looks like. So we've got this little foyer area over here for when they first walk in. I wanted to keep the furniture and the clutter to a minimum and simple because I just really feel like even though there would be some because they're going to have stuff left over from when their parents were alive that's, you know, just not so much that their parents were hoarders, but you know, you you accumulate things over time. So they're going to have things left over from when their parents are alive but also i don't feel like they've accumulated much more i feel like they do live a very simple life like i said i feel like they spend most of their time out in the garage in the junkyard area and they spend a lot of time socializing with the the sims that come in to do business there so I did want to keep everything like fairly simple as far as the furniture goes, the amount of furniture, the amount of clutter. I just wanted it to be just, I can't think of another word than simple, even though I've said simple so many times, but I feel like this is a very good rep representation of the storytelling that I was trying to convey with this build. Now, I feel like originally this house maybe only had one bedroom. And I feel like maybe over time when they had the kids coming, they added on some more. And you can kind of see that it's reflected in the outside with the metal awnings with the weird post at the back on the side of the house holding up the one awning like as if these things were just added as an afterthought so everything's kind of cramped and close you've got very small narrow hallways which you would have had from a house built in that time and i'm assuming this house was probably built in like maybe the the um 30s or 40s it is perhaps when Min Moonwood Mill was founded. But in the final evolution of this house, you do have a primary bedroom and then two other bedrooms, which would have been for the sons. Now, at this point, after the parents passed, one of the adult sons has moved into the primary room and one has stayed in his bedroom, which he's been in his entire life. And then they've chosen to take the second bedroom and turn it into an office. So what I'm doing now here, this is the primary bedroom. And once again, this is where the parents would have slept. And so we're getting ready to put the wallpaper up here in just a moment. And it's going to be, it's going to be the wallpaper that's left over from when the parents were alive. Not something in particular that, you know, the, the adult son that has moved into this bedroom would necessarily choose. I do have a little bit more clutter going on in this bedroom than the other rooms, simply because I feel like maybe once he moved into this bedroom, he didn't take out some of the stuff that were left by the parents. He just kind of boxed it up and shoved it over into the corner. 
which is the area that I'm working on now. Uh, there, he just, you know, he stacked all that stuff over there. You can kind of see it now as I'm putting up pictures. He just boxed up their stuff and put it, because he, he didn't know what to do with it. You know, he didn't want to get rid of it. It's a very small house. There's not much room for storage. I do feel like, you know, some of it went into that, that big closet there. But whatever he couldn't fit in the closet with his clothes and his belongings, he just shoved it to the side there. And it just sits there. And it doesn't bother him too much, you know, that, that it's a constant reminder of, of his parents being gone now. Uh, it's more of a comfort to him just still having those things there. Or that's how I felt the story would go. And then this is the second adult brother's room. Once again, this is his bedroom from the time he was small. I wanted to put some type of wallpaper on the walls that was more childish. You know, thinking that his bedroom had been decorated by his parents when he was young and it hadn't really changed the entire time you know like since he's grown up it hasn't changed but I really feel like I couldn't find anything that was fitting so we just we just went with paint and of course we've got the scuffs and the tears and the stuff on the walls and some water stains because I feel like this has is the original paint or wallpaper that has been in this house since he was a child you know it's not really hurting anything other than it looks a little rough so he feels like you know why fix it you know whatever it's it's fine it's still functioning and that was my theory behind that uh, I feel like the, the little camping lamp that I added here on the side table instead of having just a normal lamp I feel like it was one of those things where Oh, I'd like to have a lamp beside my bed and my lamp that I had beside my bed when I was a child stopped working so this lantern works just fine I'll stick it there like I said very much you know they're they're very thrifty they're very they have a lot of ingenuity you know they'll they're they're the kind of people that don't they're not above rigging something to fix it which I mean you know if you live where your business is a junkyard that kind of makes sense that you would part things here and there and use different pieces from your own junkyard to to fix things and i feel like that's that's part of the storytelling is that lamp being there and this is the third and final bedroom that was turned into an office so that they can because uh, they kind of as the the business grew and grew throughout the years they, they kind of ran out of room in the office that's out in the in the garage because I really feel like they have kept every work order and every invoice and just every every little scrap of everything from this business from the very beginning so they just have they have filing cabinets full of stuff and all of that and maybe like years and years and years of 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 taxes that have been done you know tax returns or actually they own in a business they probably would be ta paying taxes but you know what I mean so I just I feel like they've got all of the old records stored in this room and maybe the files that are on the walls, that are hanging on the walls, those are the newer things. The current things, the things from this year that, that they're working on, or from like the past year. Uh, and we're getting ready to put that picture in here that I talked about. I feel like this is the only the only piece of art that the brothers have added, is the uh, the dogs playing cards picture, the famous dogs playing poker. I feel like one of the brothers has a, a an interesting sense of humor and decided that that would be just a great addition to the office. He likes dogs. He's got the dog calendar. He's got the dog playing cards picture. And I do in the 
garage area out here in the junkyard add uh, food bowls and a dog bed so that they could have a dog I would assume they'd have a dog but I feel like it would be an outside dog it would be a junkyard dog the dog would mainly stay in the fenced in area and in the garage which I mean that's not my thing I like my dog being around me and want <laughs> my dog in the house but you know that's I feel like that's that's where they like to have the dog is in the fenced in area and in the in the garage out there now as far as the landscaping goes for this build I made it very overgrown and unruly right here in front of the house as if nothing as if there's a hint that it there used to be some landscaping here there used to be flower beds out here in the front but maybe over time you know since the parents passed nobody's really messed with the flower beds out front nobody's done any upkeep no weeding and they got watered if it rained and that was about it so everything out front there in front of the house has pretty much dried up died become overgrown also where that truck is parked out front there i decided to extend that little dirt gravelly area all the way over to where the uh, electric pole is to have like sort of like a little parking area for the junkyard and and i throw some cars over there but you'll see you'll you'll catch glimpses of that later but most of that was done and also the landscaping all around the house was done off camera just for time's sake so that this video didn't just drag on forever and ever so we've moved on to building the actual garage that we've fenced in here and i i wasn't sure if i wanted to do like a a wooden garage or if I what I wanted it to look like at first but I felt like the metal exterior and the metal on the roof was great and it also that metal on the roof matched the front overhang and the side overhang roof on the actual house which also for storytelling sake I feel like you know when they changed the metal roof out on this building here this garage they used the leftover metal to re-roof those two overhang areas which probably needed it they they were probably in a state of disrepair and that's why now i use the term garage for this loosely because it's i it, i i really honestly i think it depends on on what part of the world and what part of even the united states if you're in the united states of america which area you're in it, it could be called a garage some people would call it a, a building an outbuilding a pole barn i've i've heard it called many different names but we're going to stick with garage here and i just i i wasn't real sure what to put in this garage i just i knew that i wanted some type of building here like i didn't want just an entire fenced in area of old cars and junk and garbage I felt like I needed something and it kind of makes sense that they'd have some type of building here at least left over from when it mainly functioned as an auto shop more than a garage these little hanging lights that I put in here they look great I love them I love them a lot I love the way they look the lighting from them is just absolutely horrendous it's terrible so i did leave some of the saucer lights up in the garage area even though it doesn't really fit with the theming but we needed more light in there this is the point where i start building the little office area with of course like the little window pass through so people would like could come in and walk up to the little window and look through to the office and, and do their business 
at first I had it where, you know, they just came into the, the actual big open garage area and did that. But then I decided that it would probably be best and to go ahead and turn this into its own little room separate from the garage so like they'd come into a door specifically for a a waiting room area uh, I do throw like a bench in there and a magazine rack and put some art on the walls for them to you know things for them to do while they're they're waiting perhaps they're waiting for for a car repair or perhaps they're you know they've come to do a, a pick apart thing but they don't know exactly how to get that part off the car that they want so i thought it would be nice to have like the little waiting room area there now at this point i've done a whole lot of the landscaping and i've pulled out just all kinds of stuff from the debug minute debug menu the live edit objects menu to sit around to kind of really flesh out my junkyard theming and we've got we've just got we've got some, some garbage a little garbage i didn't want it to be like trashy you know but we do have a little garbage there because I think that would make sense. It's a little paper garbage. Maybe stuff have like fallen out of, of cars or uh, that dresser or whatever. But I, I've got, I definitely wanted more than just auto junk. I wanted it to be more than just like a, 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 a pull apart or a salvage yard. I really wanted it to be just all kinds of different junk here including that plane I love that plane I think that was such a cute little idea to add the plane I don't know where they got the plane where it came from but there it is in the junkyard so if you need parts for a plane they've got you covered so I've got uh, I did do some some theming around the back mainly I just added some more trees to, to try to Blend it in with the rest of the environment around this lot. I do have a clothesline back there because that felt appropriate. I feel like there would be a clothesline back there. And like I talked about before, there was the the front part with the car park there in front of the house. And just a whole lot of big plants. Big plants, overgrown plants. It's I think all around the house it's it's become very wild. I did a little bit more decorating inside this garage area off camera because I just, I didn't want this to turn into a really long video. I'm trying to keep it around 30 minutes and hopefully, you know, you don't mind too much that I did it this way because you can, as I'm going around decorating the, the little, the little half bath that I've got out here in the garage. You know, you can kind of see, you can see what's, what's going on in the garage there. You've already seen the little office area. We've got stains on the floors. We've got some chairs that we're going to add in here with the cooler and some shelving. Because I really feel like they spend all their time in this garage. I'm putting in the stuff now for a dog. And we are wrapping things up at this point so the screenshots are coming up next but stick around because after the screenshots there is a sneak peek of the next build as always thank you once again so much for watching the video i really do appreciate it download this build off the gallery my ea id is pixie dusted just like the youtube video and until next time bye <music>